Substances? Is Violet Evergarden gonna take Berserker Mushrooms too? Ooh, flashback. Some backstory on Major Gilbert. Wow. Well, how do you really feel, Other Gilbert? Was it a girl in a box? Violet in a box? She just got gifted? <laughs> Immediate. Immediate. Ah. Uh. So I was a little bit confused. I was certain she was a robot. It was the arms, obviously, but then also the fact that she seems kind of like a blank slate. And she's a killing machine. I thought she was literally a killing machine. Why is she so deadly? She's some sort of... Was she some sort of child childhood soldier? Also, there were shots of a doll. So I thought that was an analog for her. But maybe that's just the, the memory doll thing. But she seems super non-worldly. Maybe it's only been war. Maybe her whole life has been fighting. And back to the present. I'm a little bit unclear on the, the memory doll thing, but I know it's going to be a vehicle for some very interesting explorations. Right. Absolutely nothing. Oh, another one. <laughs> What's Iris's problem? A lot of personalities in this office. <laughs> what is the problem? <laughs> so competitive. Let's see if they react the same way that... Yeah. They were less shocked than... What's his name? Benedict. So, wait, they have F and J? <laughs> uh, that was a lie. Uso de Aru. There is, there is no F or J on this keyboard. Is that a translation mistake? I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this symbol system. Major Gilbert is number one. What's she actually going to type? It must be hard without any, any tactile sense. I'm just probably going to be great at it. Just pouring out of her. What do you have to say now, Erica and other girl? Actually, all things considered, I feel like typing is one of the most useful things I've ever learned in my entire life. She was just ready to go, like anything to be put to work. Now, just knowing that she's human is like making me question a lot about her background. How did she end up like this? She must have been very restricted and task focused for her entire life. If this is like her human awakening, you know? <laughs> She's writing a book. It's about Major Gilbert. It's still fun. I need everyone to know how good I am at typing. Oh, it's I, ribbon and clock. Time for some lunch. Oh, making a move. Rejected. <laughs> Ooh. Did he only bring lunch for one of them? Is that what happened? Oh no, he invited both of them. Hedging his bets. Kawaii so. <laughs> if love is war, he just lost. Ooh, someone's salty. This guy looks like he wants some fried noodles. <laughs> Does he mean working girls or girls with no jobs? Strike four. I knew it! <laughs> She was a whole army in herself, it seems. What's eating Erica? Are we sure she's not a robot? Kawaii so. <laughs> this guy's a rock star. Nothing sexier than a man who owns a post office. What's eating Erica? It does look like a book. Oh, that's I got a special delivery for Claudia's house. 
どこへ実質です訓練のためとそれから She's looking at this like it's her salvation. When are they going to tell her and us what happened? <gasps> you just made a powerful enemy at, at, at work. So they're just sort of reinterpreting or interpreting the, the emotions or feelings or messages of these people and sending them off. Oh man. Is this what's troubling her? And then she made a friend in the same day. And she's taking it really seriously. No lies were told. So I just suddenly got the feeling that there was something key I missed in episode one. So I went back and watched the, the ending part of it where she gets introduced to memory dolls. And there's something really compelling about this whole setup. I mean, now I know she's not a robot. She's a human being who, for whatever reason, probably being seen as a tool and being a soldier for most of her life, I'm guessing. A, she hasn't had that much experience outside of combat, but B, and maybe more significantly, she's had to compartmentalize a lot of who she is in order to survive. It's all there, but she's disconnected from it. It's like in a place she can't access it. I mean, she obviously felt a lot of love for Major Gilbert. She obviously has a lot of these emotions that she's not able to process, except by looking at it through the lens of others. There's something about the dictation of that letter last episode that triggered that response in her. And that makes some intuitive sense. There's something about having another observer that has the potential to immediately illuminate certain things that are otherwise invisible or heighten emotions of certain things. This is not a great example, but one that comes to mind is I've had this very distinct phenomenon happen where I'll tell myself a certain thing over and over again for a long period of time that contains an inaccuracy or a certain self-delusion. The second I say that very same thing that I've up to this point believed in front of another person, especially someone that I, I respect or value, before the person even says anything or responds in any way, Way, I'm immediately alerted to the fact that there's something dishonest about what I'm saying. Another example, just somebody laughing at the right moment or crying at, at the right moment or wrong moment or whatever can just take you there immediately. In a weird way, that person's existence just creates a reflection of myself. It automatically forces me to make room for their perspective or what I imagine another perspective to be. Violet, for whatever reason, doesn't have direct access to this. And I think there's probably more to that than just her, her feelings of love. You know, Claudia, Claudia was mentioning that she's burning. There's going to be a lot in there that maybe she's purposely blocked off. I don't know what her secrets are, but I feel like she's going to get a lot more than she bargains for with this. It's also just so sad. It's so sad, like, hearing her talk and not realizing that something bad has happened with Major Gilbert. And she is internalizing that as her fault. It seems like the, the logical train of thought in all this is that she's worthless. But she gets interrupted before she can say anything. I can't tell if Erica doesn't like the job or if she just feels inadequate at a job she does like. This is a hard one to paraphrase. <laughs> um... Using what you just said? Ooh, stepping up. This is a subtle one, though. I don't know. <laughs> I like her enthusiasm, though. Plunging head first like it's a matter, matter of survival. Oh, no. <laughs> I really am curious what she wrote. I am a gold digger, but I don't want you to think that. <laughs> I require a car. And <laughs> they all learned how to speak a little more honestly that day. I think she nailed it. Should have said that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's on you. <laughs> you walked in there and said that exact thing. Am I crazy? I gotta listen to that again. I'm with Violet Evergarden on this one. Just say what you think from the beginning. Don't play any games. All right, I watched it again just to be sure. And to be fair, she didn't ask for material things. She just talked about proving his love. There's multiple interpretations of that. And reading between the lines, she's obviously very invested in it. But she asked them to make it romantic, and that was kind of a tall order. 
given the fact that there was zero romance in what she said. It's also clear that the, the girl is very much invested in this relationship and is just trying to be coy, partly masking her own fear, which just got revealed. Speaking of not having access to your own thoughts and emotions, that's true of not just Violet, but the whole customer base. Is this Violet doing her a favor? I mean, she's she's just connected with something that is more authentic. It feels better to hear her say that even though she's sad. It's a lot more endearing than whatever that front was that she had up. I mean, I sort of get it. There is something to that, that game, you know, it kind of heightens tension. I do think people tend to value things more when they feel like they've worked hard for it, but I think you can do that without the pretense. Maybe the problem wasn't the dishonest way she framed it to the guy she wanted to write the letter to, but the way she was dishonestly framing it for herself as sort of this self-defense thing, this ego preservation thing that was oh so well covered in Kaguya-sama. I mean, I think all told, if I really like someone, if I'm really interested in someone, I'm not calculating how easy or difficult they are. I'm just relieved if they have any kind of reciprocal feelings at all. There's no need for any of that to win me over. I've already been won over. And if I haven't been won over, the games are not really a great way to win me over. I mean, maybe it can serve as a hook, but it's gonna come apart eventually. Like, what's the long-term plan? I'm gonna figure it out. You know, I'm gonna know what you really are if I spend enough time with you. And the deeper that starts out, the stickier it gets later on. Because it's like you're building a relationship and a, a concept of someone else on something that was never really real to begin with. So it's such a shaky foundation. It's more risky, it's more dangerous for the heart, but maybe it's just better to start off in as honest a place as possible and just trust that things will work out for the best that way, even if it's not with the, you know, the person you're currently fixated on. It's so well done. Like this girl suddenly seems so sweet when she breaks down because it feels real. It feels like it's actually her heart. It's her emotion. It's not this like weird air that she's putting on. It's immediately relatable. It's like, yeah, of course you, you like him. I was going to say that Violet cut in on Erica's lunch, but Erica might've dodged a bullet there. You're fired. <laughs> this is the meeting where you get fired. Brace yourself for disappointment. This is such a real thing though. Have you guys ever had this experience when you're obsessed with somebody, you start to see them everywhere? You see people on the street and you think it's them? That has definitely happened to me. You want to eat fried noodles? Are we sure she's not a robot? <laughs> No, there's something really critical for her in this. It's all unraveling. We can all turn around. It was your first day. Oh, that was rude. <laughs> I mean, not with that kind of response. It's a work in progress. Right, that was what triggered it. She understands it on her end, but maybe not on the receiving end. There's just a missing fuse or something. Something's not connecting. Yeah, just have her shadow a bit first. Maybe like proofread her work. Dig that hole deeper, Violet. <laughs> what do you want, Erica? What do you want to do this? She's looking for the same things. She looks like something out of the movie Amadeus. Oh, is it the jewel? It is. Maybe it's a really nice thing he did for her, tracking that down. And he did that despite having no money. Does he care about her or does he care about the major? Or both? He's from a family so rich they use sabers. Yeah, he's gone. Well, it's still holding on to hope. It's still a little vague. 
but I guess sufficient for our purposes. Come to think of it, maybe the reason why Claudia can't tell her isn't because there's anything dark or shocking, but because he too has not fully comprehended the depth of his own emotions or can't quite bring himself to fully process it. Seems like he was almost on the verge there in the bar scene, but it might just be too much for him to do in front of Violet, knowing how much Major Gilbert also meant to her and vice versa. Violet is not the only character working through stuff. Quite the packed episode. Violet learns how to type and fails her first assignment and everyone else fails to proofread. Claudia calls out the wrong name in bed. Does that even happen? I've like seen that in movies is that a real thing and if so why we got the introduction of everyone's favorite character ultimate lunch bro sharing noodles with benedict some development for erica and iris both of whom also have their own stuff going on for sure and then just a feeling of melancholy <laughs> Like a, a feeling of this sweet, is she sweet? This innocent girl, in a way she's sweet, who has a train full of heartbreak coming. I can't help but wonder if the client whose life Violet ruined isn't important in some very key symbolic way. She came in with all this pretense, terrified to look at what was actually going on, masking her vulnerability with a wall of self-deception critically, but also just a weird strategy with which to approach it. But then ended up with an insight at the end, weirdly, as a result of the whole thing and ended up breaking down in a way that felt right, if that makes sense. It felt like it was good for her. I feel like that's not the last time that's going to happen. Like there's going to be this connecting thing that happens where all the things that are already there and that they're aware of are going to match an eventual outlet for that where they're able to accept what is going on. But it's going to hurt a lot. It's going to suck, at least at first. But then you hope it'll pave the way for something actually beautiful.